Advertisement has been around since the creation of the first product. As time goes on, advertisers find new ways to promote their products to the general public, whether it be through commercials on TV, ads in magazines and newspapers, and even through online means like this very video, advertisements are everywhere and a piece of our day-to-day -day lives. So for something so important to our everyday lives, something so constant, you have to ask yourself how exactly these things get lost. Today, we're diving into a world of advertisements and promotions that have become lost media, so go ahead and sit back, relax, grab yourself some snacks, maybe drink some water if you haven't already, and get cozy, because today, we're talking about 10 lost advertisements and promos. Number 10, McDonald's Yum Chums. Mickey D's, oh you gotta love them golden arches. Chances are you're quite familiar with the fast food chain at McDonald's. I mean it's everywhere, especially here in the United States. However, this advertisement in question stems from the United Kingdom, that being McDonald's Yum Chums, which were these strange creatures that would accompany Ronald McDonald. I have no idea what these creatures are supposed to be. You know, at least in McDonald's lore, you know what each character is and what they correlate to. You know how like Grimace is supposed to be a taste bud, but I have zero idea what these things are. There were like five of these creatures that lived inside the stomach of Ronald McDonald. So I, so I guess they're like bacteria that break down food. I'm, I'm just gonna stop asking questions at this point. So the commercials would have Ronald McDonald doing some random thing and he says something along the lines of yum yum, what's going on in my tum? And then we get bored by him, but not through his mouth, but it still happens. And we to see the yum chums doing stuff in his tongue. <laughs> I hate this script already. So while within his stomach, these horrid little microorganisms proceed to sing songs about staying healthy, something McDonald's knows everything about. And that was basically the commercial. There were like four of these according to the article, and one of the ads was just called drinking water and it's still lost. And let's be honest, when was the last time you ordered a water from McDonald's? There's a vague description of this ad, uh, where these awful horrendous creatures, yum chums if you may, swim around in water and sing they tell you to drink water. Uh, then Ronald McDonald also tells you to drink water. At this point it's becoming more of a demand. There was a Yum Chums website back in the day, it actually still exists in the internet archive, but I'm not going to subject myself to the wacky wonders of the Yum Chums website, so I'll leave that up to you. These ads were made in like 2004, so it's been almost two decades since their creation, and I'm really unsure of how likely these things are to surface, but three of the ads are already online and ready to be viewed. Number 9. Lost Billy Mays Ads Billy Mays is a legend to the advertising world. He's the man who pitched many different products like OxyClean, the ShamWow, the Steam Buddy, and more. And Billy Mays is iconic for many, many reasons. He's most well known for his opening line of, Hi, Billy Mays here, and then proceeding to pitch the product. He's a true salesman, and he had a lot of commercials, and understandably, some have become lost. There are seven ads that are completely lost, three that are partially found, and one that is partially lost. The differences between partially lost and partially found are that things that are partially found are mostly lost, and things that are partially lost are mostly found. And I really hope I didn't confuse you there, because in all honesty, it took me about a month to figure that out, so yeah. Luckily, we know which ads are lost, which makes things a lot easier than, say, having a number of missing ads with no other information. Such lost ads include things like a wireless headset for cell phones, an easy to assemble readjustable corner shelf, an organizing bag for your trunk, and more. All exciting things that I'm just wishing I could buy right now, especially that corner shelf. Since a lot of these products can be identified and linked back to the producers, people are more likely to find these ads, versus if the ads were known as just vague descriptions of the product. One of my favorite parts about the Lost Media Wiki article for this is that they provide proof to each ad's existence. This makes things a whole lot easier so that we don't have to worry about these things falling into the category of existence unconfirmed. I'm unsure if any of these companies behind these ads have been contacted, so you have to wonder what kind of archival they have for their advertisement and promotional media. Number 8. Daft Punk 2002 Winter Olympics Ad Hosted in Salt Lake City, Utah, the 2002 Winter Olympics were surely something worth watching. Germany won 35 medals, 12 of which were gold, Norway had the most gold medals being 13 out of their 24 total medals, and everything was just an overall cool experience. Now, if you're into cool and epic music, you've probably heard of a group called Daft Punk. 
The French music duo had started in 1993 and recently disbanded in 2021. A lot of their music produced has become quite iconic, and they were brought on by different companies for ads that aired during the 2002 Winter Olympics. Usually, unless ads during big events are important or iconic, like the Baby Mr. Peanut ad or the Little Caesars announcing they're delivering, because that means a lot to me, a lot of ads get forgotten or overshadowed by the events that people watch for. It wouldn't be until 2012, a whole decade later, that someone would bring up these Daft Punk Olympic ads. A website made for Daft Punk fans called Daft Club made mention of the ads. Specifically, a user named Thomas Bangalter, I really hope I'm saying that right, when he had asked about ripping VHS content for the TV ads. Later that same year, YouTube user Full Metal Anbu, I really hope I'm saying that right as well, uploaded a video that showed all sorts of VHS tapes he had owned. Upon one of them were the four lost ads. Three of the four ads have been uploaded onto YouTube and are actually still able to be viewed and whatnot. The only ad that was missing was the 2002 Winter Olympics ad. This ad was said to have featured the song Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, but that's about all the details I have for the actual content of the ad. I honestly don't know why the guy who had the four ads didn't upload this one, and I'm sure there's probably a good reason and it's not some spooky mystery or conspiracy, so we're not gonna dive too far into that. Number 7, Les Cartooners Associé Demo Reel Ads Watch me horribly butcher this title. Les Cartooners Associé, which translates roughly to the Associated Cartoons in French, is an animation studio that started up in 1982. It has a bunch of animated shows to its name, however, we're going to be focusing on something else. That being the demo reel they created, which featured tons of unidentified pieces of advertisement animation. This demo reel features 33 pieces of media, 19 of which are lost due to the majority of them being unidentified. It should be noted that a good portion of what was featured in this demo reel were ads, which is why it was on this list. That and the fact that the demo acted as a promotion. I do feel like mentioning that since this is a demo reel, I feel like a lot of the unidentified media may not be identified at all in the future. Oh, but Sewer, why would you say such a thing? I say it because it's a demo reel. Some of the pieces could very well just be animation tests put into the reel to take up space. There's not a lot to say about this one other than there just being a lot of lost animated segments including things like a bunch of ghosts taking the bus, some dude with jagged teeth eating eggs, an ad that had a bunch of mosquitoes and bugs bothering someone, and just so on. Needless to say that this demo reel has a lot of variety, however the demo reel itself isn't lost, it's just the complete animated segments that are and thus the ads featured within the demo reel fall into this category. I honestly don't know why there would be ads in the demo reel unless that's what the company was aiming to produce at the time because it would make more sense to have cartoon related material or just animation tests in it but hey you know I still think it's pretty neat and hopefully while editing this I, I remember to put a picture of this list on screen because it's a, it's a long list. I also need to mention that nobody knows when the demo reel was even made. It can be dated to at least 1999 because of it featuring the song Body Rock by Moby, which was released in July of 1999, so, um, yeah. But it can be viewed online, so that's, that's pretty neat. Number 6, Ardman Ads. A lot of us are quite familiar with Ardman Animations. They're the studio that brought us such gems as Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep, Early Man, and more. Needless to say, the studio is extremely versed in claymation and stop motion animation. Way back in 1984, they started to make ads for various things including Lego, Chevron, and more. A lot of their work is online and available to be viewed, however a good portion of their work is lost. There is estimated to be around over 20 different ads to be lost, each from a different company with the strong possibility of there being more than one ad for each company. I did some looking and it's pretty likely considering that they made like two Lego ads which are really neat. The only thing here that I deeply care about is the Lost Little Caesars ad because it's good pizza when someone isn't right in your ear telling you it's bad. I bet I just started a war in the comments. Interestingly enough, it's possible that some of these ads might have been online at one point, as a now deleted YouTube playlist which featured various Ardman ads had some private uploads featured in the list. There are a few images online of different things from lost commercials, including figures from a lost Weedos commercial, a few shots of models from the lost Pedigree ad, and a still from one of 16 of the lost Knighton ads. Yeah, one of 16. There's probably a whole lot more from Ardman out there, but until it's all found, these ads are going to remain lost. Number 5, Mystery Funhouse Ad. 
tourist attractions are no strangers to raking in large sums of money. When you're out on a road trip or going somewhere far, tourist attractions run the gambit of any neat place you'd visit along the way to spend some of your sweet money on. Among many, many, many tourist attractions is none other than the Mystery Funhouse. Mystery Funhouse first opened to the public in 1976 and ran until 2001, almost a good 30 years. The Funhouse had all sorts of wacky features like a maze of mirrors, a moving bridge, tunnels you had to crawl through, just fun stuff to do while you're on that road trip to the middle of nowhere. There was mini golf, laser tag, a magic shop, they even had their own animatronics show at one point. This place actually sounds pretty fun, wow. Anyways, there was a commercial produced in 1977 for the local area that was meant to promote the tourist attraction. The only pieces of this commercial that exist are photographs that were taken of a TV ad while it aired. The photographs came from a child actor featured in the commercial claiming that their dad would call television stations in advance so he could know exactly when the commercial would air so he could take the pictures. It's pretty much unknown if anyone has a copy of the original commercial, considering that the family involved only has photographs, and the Mystery Funhouse itself is no more. And hey, even if it was still in business today, I have no idea who you'd be able to reach out to about this thing, due to the fact that they made it in the 70s, almost 50 years ago. Number 4. Peanuts Sponsorship Ads a lot of us are familiar with Peanuts. First starting in 1950, The Peanuts is a well-known cartoon comic strip that has been published in newspapers, seen animated TV specials, and even received its own movie. It's essentially without question that Peanuts has garnered the attention of many. So what happens when you have a huge audience that consumes your media? Advertisers. That's right boys, capitalism. So apparently the Coca-Cola company commissioned a Charlie Brown Christmas and thus had product placement inserted into a unique animated segment with the sponsor ID. I, I hope that makes sense to you because I don't know how else to phrase this without just plagiarizing the LMW article. So thanks to whoever wrote this article, you're really getting me through this. So sponsors could promote these animated peanut specials in return for animated product placement and it wasn't long until other companies started on that trend. As far as I know, there are seven sponsor sequences, four of which are still lost, so I guess it's a sponsor sequence from each Peanut special. The ones known to be missing are from You're in Love, Charlie Brown, He's Your Dog, Charlie Brown, It Was a Short Summer, Charlie Brown, and Play It Again, Charlie Brown. Some of the sponsor segments were actually uploaded a while back, but Wildbrain ended up blocking the videos. However, it's worth mentioning that at the time of writing this, three of these promos have been found, so there's some hope for these as they were found pretty recently. The article unfortunately only describes the found ad, so I, I guess it's generally unknown what the other sponsor segments were like. I really don't have a lot to say about these other than I hope these get found in the near future, because I myself am a huge Peanuts fan. I see a Snoopy doll at Walmart and I leave with the whole stock. Anyways, moving on. Number 3, Muppet Show Promos. There are various ways to promote a product, an ad campaign, a weird poster of some dude who people see in their dreams, an interactive game that's used to promote the upcoming product. That's just why I love promos, they're all unique, and you can't get more unique than The Muppets. The Muppet Show is an icon of entertainment, created by the legendary Jim Henson, The Muppet Show revolved around the titular Muppets getting up in wacky hijinks and shenanigans while doing their own variety program. The show ran from 1976 to 1981, and like many different programs, it was given a lot of promotion. Promos were created in order to build hype for the upcoming episodes by revealing which guest star would be on next. To put into perspective how many of these promos are missing, I actually lost count looking at the list of promos, but I do believe that there's around 96 missing promos. That is an unbelievably large number. I don't think it would be too hard to find these if you had VCR recordings of the airings, but honestly with a number that big and significant, you'd think that someone would have come forward by now with some recordings. Once again, don't quote me here on the math because I suck at counting, but apparently there's about 27 found promos. Yet again, I could be wrong because, yet again, I suck at counting. And to put that into perspective, I'll probably just put this list up on screen or something. Now let's add one more thing to interest us here. There are some promos that fall into the existence unconfirmed category. Those promos are mainly rumored to exist by fans who speculate them to be highlight clip promo things, which comes from the theory that since there was a highlight thing made for the first season, others were probably made. There's also a rumored promo that used a spare Kermit puppet that had wound up looking so warped it just wouldn't look good on TV. It's unknown if any footage of that exists to this day, but it was still a promo nonetheless.
Number 2. McDonald's Archie Dancing Guys, look! Another McDonald's ad! I bet you're expecting me to go on another McDonald's tirade as I try to understand how McDonald's Archie character is even remotely alive because, yeah, he, he shouldn't be. He has two massive gaps in his body. Who's Archie, you ask? Well, back into the discussion of McDonald's lore, Archie was the previous mascot of the fast food giant before being replaced by Ronald McDonald. In the early 60s, before the retirement of the Archie character, McDonald's developed a commercial in which Archie would dance around a McDonald's countertop. Many debate the exact date of the commercial, although an official McDonald's plaque mentioning the commercial states it to be circa 1963. It's unknown where this commercial could be today, as a McDonald's customer satisfaction representative has stated that McDonald's does not have a video library containing copies of all McDonald's commercials. With that being said, McDonald's probably has no traces of this commercial outside the plaque. I doubt anyone has a VCR recording of the commercial, because as far as I know, VCRs weren't as mainstream in the 60s. But hey, if anyone does have a copy of the commercial, now would be the time to prove me wrong. Number 1. Spore 2D Dude, I love Spore. I used to be obsessed with this game, like playing it every day and getting mods for it. Spore is a game released in 2008 by Electronic Arts. Basically, you play as a god of some sort, create a creature, evolve from a small cellular organism, like a McDonald's Yum Chum, and evolve into a large space-faring civilization. They added DLCs to the game, I have both by the way, and they released a game called Spore Hero for the Wii, and Spore Hero Arena for the DS, but that, that's not important right now. I'll be honest, I haven't even touched Spore Hero. I mean, it looks neat, but I also don't have a Wii, so... In a means to promote this wonderful release, EA developed a Flash game called Spore 2D, which was pretty much what you'd expect from a Flash game based around Spore. There's actually some gameplay of it online, surprisingly, from like 2009, so it's not too far lost. My only problem with it is that the game looks horrendous. It's, it's fascinating to me because I get the same vibes of a rip-off Mario Flash game from this game. The game has you design your own creature, like how you do in the original Spore, and you deflect rocks that shoot from the mouth of a totem pole. Yeah, you get points and you can unlock more parts, and yeah, just, just a fun time. The game ran on its own website, which is pretty much unavailable now, and even if it wasn't, you can't run this game without Flash. People have tried to recover the game, but even archives lack certain files, so it's hard enough trying to get the game to work. The game needs an XML file to run, but unfortunately it's unavailable online, so unless you know anyone who directly was involved with the creation of the game for whatever reason kept a copy of the XML file, the game is unplayable. So, there we have it, 10 pieces of lost advertisements and promos. I thought a lot of these were pretty interesting when looking at their Lost Media Wiki articles, so if you're interested in learning more about these entries, go check out their articles. Advertisements are in our day pretty much always, so I thought we'd make a Lost Media perspective on them and do this video. Even if it did take a million years to get out, of course. Like always guys, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to leave a like and give me some feedback in the comments. If you guys have anything you'd like to add, there should be a pinned comment where you can correct me on any mistakes I have, that way people can get the correct information there. If you're interested in more of my content, consider subscribing, it's free, and you can click that bell icon to be notified of the next upload. As always guys, it's been a blast, and I will see you all next time. Peace!